I'm Daniel Rosen. I'm co-founder of the Rhodium Group and director of the China Dashboard Project that Rhodium conducts in partnership with the Asia Society Policy Institute. The China Dashboard is a quarterly assessment of how much progress China is making in implementing its own self-stated goals for economic policy reform. We started working on this several years ago, and now we're up to our third edition. We believe strongly that the current tensions in U.S.-China relations mean that objective data and analysis is more important than ever to undergird a strong relationship between these two leading global economies. Though the indicators we're looking at presently aren't all rosy, this approach of looking to objective data gives us the best chance to get forward past rough patches, past the politics, to an efficient economic outcome that will benefit both economies. We are seeing presently the same basic pattern as we saw in the previous quarter. A lot of very strong policy pledges being made, but in eight out of 10 areas of policy action, um, we're not really moving forward. We're seeing neutral or some negative movement in those policy areas. On the positive side, we do have some elements. Standing out is environmental policy reform, where our tracking of air quality and surface water quality both continue to improve quite notably. We can say pretty clearly at this point that China's gotten to the stage where it is earnestly and seriously implementing environmental policy enforcement to improve environmental conditions. In addition to those air and water quality measures, we also see an extraordinary uptick in China's manufacture of new energy vehicles, which over time is helping to displace fossil fuel using vehicles and thus having a really positive impact on the environment. Also on the positive side, China's scoring well right now in terms of innovation policy. This one's a little bit tricky to understand because our measure of innovation looks at how much of China's industrial output is in higher technology industries that China has defined as its goals for 2025. However, there's quite a lot of international disagreement about the tactics and techniques China is using to achieve that a higher innovation share in its economy. A lot of industrial policy that is favoring some industries over other industries, favoring some Chinese firms over some international firms as well. Moving to the negative side, we continue to see fairly slow or negative movement in eight out of 10 reform areas. I wanna mention one or two. First of all, on center local fiscal reform. This is very important. For years, local governments in China have been forced to resort to uh, policies to fund the expenditures they're required to make, policies that aren't always helpful for long-term development. Taking land away from farmers at fairly low prices so they can transfer it into doing things making steel, even if the overall market for steel products is already pretty well saturated. So in the fiscal space this quarter, we see that local authorities are still being required to spend 43% more than they've been given authority to raise revenues and receive transfers from the central government. So we consider that a pretty negative signal in terms of what's happening on the fiscal reform channel in China. In each of these cases, we also look at the policy indications. And on fiscal, there are good policy pledges to do better in the future. But the way our dashboard undertaking works, we're not gonna score that as a positive until we see an outcome that actually delivers that progress. In a number of other areas, we're also seeing modest or negative results presently including in state-owned enterprise reform, trade policy reform, which is very much of interest nowadays with the tensions between China and the United States over trade policy, uh, financial sector reform, and other areas. Looking at the policy dynamics of the moment, both the completion of the cycle of China's leadership uh, changeover to the second Xi Jinping term and the conclusion of the National People's Congress now in March 2018 clear the way for China to move forward with more urgent and earnest policy implementation 
if Xi Jinping's government's ready to do that. In addition, the international tension that's uh, arisen uh, between China and certainly the United States, also other OECD economies, provides yet another reason why now really is an urgent time to get more of this policy reform work done. So we're seeing lots of policy commitments and pledges, and we'll be watching in the quarters to come to see whether that translates into better outcomes for getting the job done.